Hi, this is Terrence Wu with Hawkridge Systems. In this video, I'm going to walk through the process of running a simulation using Simulia Structural Designer on the 3D Experience platform. If this tool is new to you, this should be a good video to help you get started. Before we get into it, I want to mention that this will be a quick overview. While I'll cover the main steps for setting up an analysis, I won't be getting too deep into the details. So if you find yourself wanting more information, or feel a bit lost at certain points, don't worry too much. Stick around to the end of the video, or skip to the end, and I'll share where you can find training content to fill in the blanks. I have this suspension model, and I'm going to be focusing on this steering bracket assembly, which consists of three parts. The steering bracket, pin, and ball. The first step is to save this model to the 3D Experience Cloud Platform. I'll go to the 3D Experience tab of the task pane, which lists the assembly in three parts in the active window. And I can click this button at the bottom to save them to the cloud. In this window, I can choose which collaborative space the files will be saved to and add a bookmark if I want. I'll click Save and wait while the files are uploaded. Once they're uploaded, the status icons will change and display green check marks. Now, there's one more thing I need to check before I can create a simulation. I'll expand the task pane and scroll all the way to the right. The last column shows the convert status of the files. After the SOLIDWORKS files are uploaded, they need to be converted to 3D Experience format before they can be used in a simulation, which can take a few minutes. When the icons change to green, I can move on. I'll select the assembly file and then click the 3D Experience Compass at the top left. I'll scroll down my list of roles and find Structural Designer. And then I'll scroll down the list of apps and find Linear Structural Validation. This will launch the app in a new window and create a new simulation. I can give the simulation a name choose the type of analysis, and click OK. The main toolbar, called the Action Bar, is located at the bottom of the screen and is organized into various tabs. If this is your first time using the tool, the icons are likely displayed without any text like this. If you right-click on the toolbar, you can choose to display icons and text, which is a lot easier to navigate if you haven't memorized the icons. SOLIDWORKS users should also change the view manipulation settings immediately. At the top right of the screen, click on your initials and preferences. Under Common Preferences, Profile, you can choose the SOLIDWORKS profile. You'll need to close and relaunch the app for the setting change to take effect. And then you'll be able to rotate and zoom with your mouse wheel the same as you're used to in SOLIDWORKS. The assistant on the right side of the screen can be really helpful. It lists out the steps needed to define the simulation, and when I click on a step, the commonly needed commands are listed below. The setup and parts are already looking good, but I can see I need to specify the materials for the parts. I'll click on Material Palette, either in the Assistant or the Action Bar. I'll type in 6061 T6 to filter. Our material library is a bit messy, so there are a bunch of duplicates. I'll right-click on this copy, choose Apply, click on the bracket, and click the green check mark. The assistant now shows that the material is defined for one of three parts. I'll search for alloy steel, and again, right-click and apply for both the rod and ball. With the materials defined, I'll move on to contact. I'll start by connecting the pin to the bracket with a bond. I'll use the bonded contact detection tool to find surface pairs in the assembly. The tool detected four pairs, but bonded contact three is the only one I want to apply. So I'll remove the others, and then click OK. Now, I'll add general contact. 
This specifies sliding contact between all components other than the surfaces I just bonded. Under Connections, I can create representations for mechanical components like bolts and springs, but I don't need any connectors for this simulation, so I can move on to boundary conditions. There's a selection of different boundary conditions I can apply. For this analysis, I'll define a hinge fixture at each hole. And I'll use a slider fixture on the back face to represent the rigid face of the knuckle this bracket is attached to. Under loads, I'll create a force. I'm going to apply 6,000 newtons to the ball. And I'll use this pop-up toolbar to reorient the direction of the force. I'll click OK and I'm now ready to run the simulation. When I click Simulate, I get a window with a few options. I'm able to choose whether I want to run the simulation locally or on the cloud. For either local or cloud, solving on up to four cores is included. If you have large, complex simulations and want to solve on more than four cores, extra credits or tokens are required. I'll click OK, and the simulation will start to run. This analysis is fairly simple, so it should only take a minute or so. Once the job is completed, I can close the status window and look at the results. Here, I have the Von Mises stress. I can use this drop-down menu to choose other plots, such as displacement. Now that I've completed my simulation, it's probably a good idea to save my work. At the top right of the screen, I'll click on the arrow icon and choose Save. Hopefully, this walkthrough has been helpful for you, but I do realize I didn't go into much detail. For more information, the best place to start is the 3D Learn training material. To access this, log into the 3D Experience platform in your browser, click on the compass at the top left, find the 3D Experience Works Learner and then the 3D Learn app. Select Catalog, and then the 3D Experience Works Library. Scroll down to find Learning Experience for Structural Designer, and choose Perform as a Structural Designer. This learning module, titled Practice Simulia Linear Structural Validation, is a good place to start. Of course, there's a ton of training content here, and it's worth it to explore the other courses too. Hopefully, this overview video and the training content help you get started off on the right foot with Sibulia Structural Design. If you have any questions or need some help, please reach out to us. Thanks for watching.